Welcome to The Trainer Talk, where we discuss topics related to health and fitness to help you gain back control of your health and fitness and become the absolute best version of yourself physically and mentally. Enjoy. In this episode of The Trainer Talk, we talk about doing the hard things in life, how when we challenge ourselves every day it can actually cause us to grow, get stronger, and ultimately live a healthier and happier lifestyle. So we want to encourage you to do those hard things that get you out of your comfort zone in order to grow and achieve your goals. What's some, I guess, hard aspects of life that people can overcome easier or they have more ability to overcome when they push themselves to do hard things. Yeah. So obviously you guys know this, but I think working out, pushing yourself mentally and physically, um, doing something that makes you uncomfortable, such as a workout makes you get tougher over time, kind of builds that harder shell you know like that way when stuff comes up in life like stressful things like maybe with job or family work school whatever it is you are stronger mentally and kind of more prepared to handle that stress and so it doesn't bother you as much or you're more capable of overcoming it Mm -hmm. which is what i've noticed even in my own journey of just working out for my whole life like in the moment, yeah, you relieve some stress, but at the same time, working out is a stressor and it's putting the stress on your body. And so you actually become tougher over time, which is definitely translated over into every aspect of your life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think as you get tougher, like when you start, obviously you're starting, you know, baseline, just lifting weights, doing a little bit of cardio. And as you get tougher, you have to increase the challenge. Like yeah. progressive overload. So obviously you're doing a lot harder workouts now than you were when you first started, for mm-hmm. sure. And so, I mean, that's just kind of what you have to do because the more you do it, the easier it becomes, um, which is good. Um, that's just part of the process. Which actually, so a lot of people think, okay, that yeah, if I can just work out regularly, it's like it's going to get easy. Where it doesn't necessarily get easier, you just are able to do more. So yeah. the challenge is always getting greater. Yeah. So like you just said, like over the years, like my workouts, I've gotten way more challenging. I'm able to do way more things, especially with CrossFit. Like, you know, it wasn't a few years ago I couldn't walk on my hands or do a muscle up or do, you know, pull ups to the level that I can do. I couldn't Olympic lift like I can do. But um, over training, over the years of training, I'm able to do so much more. And I'm just continuing to challenge myself. And I feel like that's directly related to everything that we do in life. If you think about when you start school, you start very, very basic, like learning addition, subtraction. And then the challenge gets harder as you progress through school. And that prepares you for the future. Mm -hmm. So we need to be doing things that challenge us, not too hard. But if you're staying with things that are comfortable and easy for too long, you regress and then all of a sudden when things come up in life, it makes it even harder to try to deal with those things. I think that honestly, as you develop, especially with health and fitness, but even other things in general, like you said, it, it doesn't ever get easier. And I think you almost are able to push to a deeper level of discomfort yep. the longer you do it. Um, and you can tolerate a lot, like a, a deeper level of discomfort and it's not really pain, but sometimes it's painful. Um, like the more you do it, like for CrossFit Metcons, you're still pushing yourself, like even the first one you did, and it was hard, but you get to a new level of knowing what you can tolerate to where, you know, you are able to go to a little, a little deeper into the pain cave than, than usual. And then I think it also gets harder because you start getting setbacks once you're, say, however many years trained. I mean, you've been training for a long, long time. And there's certain things where it's you can't do what you used to, be, used to be able to do, or there's days where you just don't feel as good, or you can't hit the weights that you're supposed to, and it's 
figuring out, like accepting that that's just how it is on that day. And then just moving forward despite of that. Whereas in the beginning, everything's so new and such a new stimulus that you're PRing every time you go to lift. Like when you miss, you go for PR and you don't get it, or you don't even get your last max. Like the most, that's one of the most frustrating things. And it almost teaches you to live with or get used, not get used to disappointment, but be able to handle it better. And I think that that translates over into life too, of just, how to keep on keeping on, just keep on doing what you need to be doing, regardless of if you're getting the results that you want. Yeah. That's a big thing is, um, and we talked about this earlier, like people think that there's like this finish line, like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this challenge or do this program for 12 weeks or six months. I'm gonna uh, get to my, you know, my goal and then I'm done. Like you hit this accomplishment and you're finished. Where it's like, you know, nothing in life you ever just, accomplish and you're done like you always have to keep moving forward like you're you're always working or um you know after school like you go to college and then after college you get your job you know, if you get a job you work your career like you're always doing something and you need to be moving forward like you, there's no um and we might make a separate topic about this like we talked about but like you know being fit and healthy is a lifestyle choice you don't just do these challenges or programs and then you're you know you succeeded or anything like that like you have to learn how to adapt these hard things because that's why most people don't succeed with it is because it is hard like it's hard to eat healthy drink enough water eat enough vegetables go to bed early wake up early those are tough things to do. That's why people don't want to do it. They want to be super comfortable. They want to do whatever makes them feel good in the moment. But what they don't realize is how detrimental that is long-term for them. Mm -hmm. And it's making them weaker mentally and physically. And so everything that comes up in their life is way harder. So I feel like people need to start looking at it as, okay, I need to be doing these hard things consistently for the rest of my life. That way I can handle everything in my life. Um, just better like being able to handle the stresses and uh literally being stronger to be able to do more things in your life like you know so many people that we see like just aren't able to do so many things that they wish they could do and that causes even more stress and then they can't handle that so i think there's a lot to just doing hard things that challenge you um that's what keeps you moving forward like we were talking if you're not growing you know, you're shrinking. Like mm -hmm. if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. If you're not getting stronger, you're getting weaker. Um, and that really boils down to challenging your body, challenging your mind and doing the hard stuff. Yeah. When I was done with football in high school, I didn't stop working out, didn't stop exercising. I, except I had to seek out different challenges. Yeah. So like I'm continuously um, making new goals, signing up for races events competitions so like last fall i really got out of my comfort zone i hated running and i ran a half marathon so it was tough and um but it was very rewarding and so now this fall i'm training for a full marathon and then also the crossfit competition as well mm -hmm. and so kind of going into that that's been like we were talking about pretty tough um, just with the amount of time that I have to put into it. And that's something that's, I've almost had to adopt new habits um, and be really disciplined. And it's just teaching me to have more structure, um, you know, setting a bedtime, make sure I'm getting enough sleep. And I still need to work on nutrition, fueling. So, and it kind of um, translates to life. Like I'm having to put in so much time uh, with these different workouts and runs. It's like having a bunch of projects piled on you at once at work or, you know, a bunch of just having lots of things going on. And it's kind of teaches you how to deal with it, how to prepare for it. You know, what do I need to be able to keep doing this long term? You know, it's taken me three or four months to prepare for this. So, How did you feel after you ran that half marathon? Um, you mean like physically or no, like mentally. mentally, after it was over, you did it. How'd you feel? Yeah. Um, I felt accomplished. I felt like I did something that I never thought I would be able to do. And I felt good cause I really went out of my comfort zone and yeah. I felt like I kind of wanted more. 
a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So yeah. you broke limiting beliefs. Yeah. You didn't think you could do it. You felt extremely accomplished, which probably made you realize, okay, all that running that I was doing was totally worth it. Mm -hmm. So knowing that, you can apply that train of thought to your training right now. Yes, it's very hard. You're having to run. You're doing CrossFit workouts. You're, you're, you're growing your clientele. You're a brand new personal trainer. Whole different lifestyle. Yeah. And so it can be draining. It can be exhausting. It can be stressful. That's what it's supposed to feel like. Yeah. That's what success is. It yeah. feels like. It, 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 that's what leads you to success is going through that hard stuff, prioritizing, you know, doing the stuff that normal people don't want to do. That's what leads to that successful accomplishment. Like when you run that half marathon, you do the CrossFit competition, you're going to look back and be like, all that hard work was totally worth it. Yeah. I wouldn't train it. If, in the world you know would you would you go back in time like oh i wish i could have just watched a movie every single day and stayed up and drank pop and slept in and not done anything you nope. feel like a total you know a, a failure almost at that point yeah right yeah it's it, definitely worth it yeah that reminds me of like one of my favorite quotes i think it was actually my high school like yearbook quote too um and it's from the movie a league of their own and it's uh it's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, then everybody would do it. The yep. hard's what makes it great. Yes. And I think that that, you know, obviously ties into big accomplishments, like doing your first CrossFit competition, doing your first half marathon, full marathon. It's like, it's supposed to be hard in the training. That's what makes it worthwhile to actually achieve it. Like, that's the thing with like college degrees, getting a good job. If it yeah. wasn't hard, then everybody would do it. Yeah. And the, the world's way too big of a place to have, every single person fit and successful right. it just wouldn't happen so guess who the fit and successful people are or whatever goal you have people that are willing to do the hard stuff yeah willing to sacrifice willing to put in that work go to bed early wake up early so it's completely up to you on which path you want to go mm -hmm. yeah the biggest thing is just getting yourself to do it and i think going in i think it it's a better mindset to go into it thinking it's going to be harder than thinking it's going to be easy yes. to eat healthier or work out. Like if you think, Oh, it's just going to be easy. I'm just going to drop weight like that. And I'm going to be at my goal weight in six months. It's like, no, just expect you almost want to focus it as, okay, it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult, but it's going to be worth it in the mm -hmm. end. And then like finding out the little things like, you know, the things like you said, make it, feel good in the moment, like whether it's just laying on the couch and watching Netflix, but then you feel like garbage once you stop mm -hmm. and be like, oh, why did I waste my time with that? Or, mm -hmm. you know, you eat some crappy food and like, yeah, it's great in the moment and it's fun to do every once in a while, but then afterwards you're just like, I don't feel good at all or drinking or whatever. And then, or staying up too late, but then on the flip side, it's a lot harder in the moment. It's difficult in the moment to work out or Maybe it's to eat right or for whatever a person's challenge is or whatever their heart is. And then afterwards, you get that boost of dopamine once you've completed it. Yep. And then you're just like, oh, like that was that was worth it. Like I feel good now afterwards rather than it's a flip side of feeling worse afterwards. Yeah. What's those other things? I was just going to say like when I think about on a daily basis, when I feel my absolute best, the most energized the most accomplished, just the absolute best feeling that I have on a daily basis is right after you get done with the Metcon. Yeah. Like you just put yourself through this pain, you pushed yourself to the limit and it was grueling. You didn't want to do it at all. It's uncomfortable. You're sweating. Your, you know, your, your heart rate is racing. You're breathing heavy. Then when you get done and you recover, you catch your breath, you feel energized, you feel accomplished. You feel that, you know, rush of dopamine, the happiness, like that's what becomes almost addicting. And that's what other people turn to in a negative way, though. It's like a mat kind of obviously is positive for our health. People get comfortable. They crave that hit of dopamine, the happiness from unhealthy foods, scrolling alcohol, phones. drugs, phones, scrolling social media. They get that dopamine hit, 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 um, except for it's not moving you in the right direction it's moving you away from where you ultimately would like to be yeah. and then over time people get so far away from where they want to be then they look in the mirror like oh crap like i need to do something and then all of a sudden that hard becomes way way harder mm -hmm. 
it's a harder, it's always just get over, overcoming that initial, like the first step or like that first workout or the yeah. first run or something like that. Like, um, for me, like I wanted to, st- like I had, didn't have to start running as early to prepare for a Spartan race in the fall. Um, but I wanted to just to, so that way I felt comfortable during the run. Um, cause I feel comfortable with all the obstacles, but not necessarily the run part. And I was like, okay, like I should probably start training now. just like trying to figure out a program. And I was like kind of doing it here and there, but nothing major. Cause I was viewing it more as like training. Um, but then I kind of switched the mindset around to, if I do it early in the morning, it's an energy boost to start my day. And it honestly was like, I felt great during it. I felt great afterwards and felt super productive, like doing it first thing in the morning. Like I got up, brushed my teeth, put my clothes on. And then I went out for the run. Like I had all my clothes out and ready. So then that way it's, it's easy. I set up my environment to make it easier to do that hard activity. Um, so I think, making the hard activities a little bit easier yes. to start. And then once they become a habit, like it's, it's not as hard to overcome that initial, like almost motivation or lack of motivation to get up and do it. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because yeah, like making the difficult choice easier will obviously set yourself up for mm-hmm. success, you know? And so many people have all these, like all the comfortable, more unhealthy things are just so accessible right there in front of us. Whereas if we made the things they were supposed to do easier to do for us, we would actually end up doing them. Mm-hmm. And I like to think of it like, a, you know, it's like a staircase rather than if you picture like a ladder with a rung that's five feet in the air and you're going to jump up there, pull yourself up and then jump up to the next one, pull yourself up. Whereas if you set a nice gradual staircase or rung every foot, it's way easier to climb up. So make it easier on yourself just one step at a time and then you'll get better and better and better um, and move toward your goals. It's a little bit, I want to add on the, you know, being, staying in situations where you're comfortable in. Um, It's a little bit off topic, but we were talking about how everything's about being comfortable now and going, um, we need to go out of our comfort zone and try these hard things. Um, And one of the, one of our biggest comforts is, scrolling through the phone or watching TV or YouTube. And I just saw this, it popped in my head. I just saw this quote, ironically scrolling through my phone, but um, it was, the internet used to be an escape from the real world when it first came out, but now going out into nature, into, you know, outside is escape from the internet. We have to, plan times in our day to go outside now yeah like that's crazy it used to be the, when it first came out it used to be the complete opposite like people would go online to yeah escape the real world but that yeah. Was the opposite, so yeah and i think it used to be more of a tool now that it's but now it's a distraction yeah more than anything else like i think it takes away more from our life and our enjoyment like i know if i'm on social media like if my phone time screen time is up i don't feel as good in the day mm-hmm. like i have less energy my mood isn't as good like starting the day without looking at your phone and then like going out and doing something productive like the run and then making breakfast like i loved my morning this morning i was like i wish i could like i want to do this every morning because it just felt so good mm-hmm. just to get up go for a run make breakfast sit down and have breakfast and then go about your day and I think if people just start their day differently, it sets the tone different for the rest of the day. Like yeah. if I just sat in bed and scrolled on TikTok or Instagram in the morning, instead of getting out and getting after it, you're not going to feel as good throughout the day. You're not going to yeah. be as productive throughout the day. It like literally will change your brain chemicals and your motivation to do other things. Yeah. And just to second that, like so many people say like, oh, I'm just too busy. I don't have time to like go for a run or get a workout first thing in the morning. But what they don't realize is when you just said you went for a run, you ate a good breakfast and then you feel so much more energized and you feel like you're more productive. Mm -hmm. So it's an investment, like investing that 15 minutes, 30 minutes to go for a run, get a workout in, you're going to gain hours of productivity in that day. So by doing something hard to start your day, you're actually able to make your day easier and get more done. 
during that day, which yeah. is very powerful. Like when I, I woke up, I had a breakfast, I came in and I immediately worked on the computer on uh, some posts and stuff. And after two hours, I'm like mentally very, very tired. Like I don't feel very energized. And even though I was, you know, I was just doing stuff for, you know, posting on our, our social media, like that was draining me. Whereas if I, I can totally agree, like if I got a workout in first or if I was moving around interacting, like training a client, I would feel more energized and more productive um, to get my day going. So that's just yeah. a very interesting way to think about it. But yeah. The biggest reasons people don't work out are the biggest reasons they need to work they out. They should work out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tired. Um, stressed. No stressed. No time. No time. Don't feel good. You're going to be I mean, more productive. You're going to sleep better. You're going to be in a better mood, more energetic. I mean, the number one excuse that people don't work out is, is they don't have enough time. And the whole entire world shut down for six months, three years ago, and everybody gained 30 pounds. Yeah. So what does that tell you? <laughs> I mean, they had nothing to do, couldn't go and do anything, and they gained weight. Well, it's not, clearly it's not the time. Right. It's just lack of priorities. Like, I mean, there's people that work 80 hours a week, maybe they're business owners or whatever they're doing. They maybe travel for a living and they still make time to work out four or five, three days a week, whatever it is. So unless you're the world's biggest, busiest person, yeah. there's not an excuse. I think that also shows how important environment is. Like as far as, like if people sat at home for months on end and then they gained 30 pounds, it's like, okay, that tells you a lot about your environment where yeah. I, like not to get off topic too much, but I actually went out and bought stuff built a like squat rack in the basement so that way I could still work out three, four days a week. And then like, I wasn't one of the people that had a quarantine 15 and, um, and I'm sure you probably had like healthier food options around the house. Yep. You didn't have a bunch of junk foods and stuff. Still meal prepped. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can stuff. sit there and watch Netflix for 10 hours a day and not gain weight. You just kind of eat healthy and move your body a little bit. You right. know? It's like, it's all about your environment. Like mm -hmm. you said, like, yeah. You know, and like for, for like the morning, like for people, even it doesn't even have to be anything super long, like 15, 20 minutes, even just 10 minutes of movement. It could be squats, push ups. You could go for a walk in the morning. Walk in nature would be fantastic. If everyone did that, like right away, first thing, got up, like maybe they turn the coffee pot on and it takes it 20 minutes to make the coffee, go for a walk around the block and then come back in and have your coffee. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's funny because we're, we're trying to make this world where we live in that's super convenient and comfortable and easy and supposed to make us happier, really, when actually it's those easy, simple, convenient, comfortable things are actually making us more unhealthy, more stressed, and more unhappy. So we need to bring back some of those just natural ways of life, like going outside moving around, going for walks, getting in nature, you know, interacting with people too. Like you yeah. notice when you're not around people for a while, you're not as happy. Like social yeah. connection is a big thing That's rather huge. than just social media. It's getting around people. Like I like doing this with you guys, you know, that gives me energy. It makes me mm -hmm. feel better. Working out with people is a whole nother level yeah. um, of social interaction, which makes you feel better. And that's what we talked about a couple weeks ago with people yeah. going to the bar. It's yeah. not, you don't just go to the bar to get wasted. You go to the bar to be around your friends yeah. and, and have a good time, connect with people. Like um, that's what we need to try to bring back into our life a little bit. And, and, and it can be tough yeah. in the world that we live in, but that's how life should be. It's supposed to be actually tough, it's supposed to challenge you. It's supposed to be hard. And that's how you're actually going to live a fulfilling life in my mm -hmm. opinion. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for tuning in to the Trainer Talk. If you are ready to gain back control of your health and fitness, we would love to sit down and chat with you to see if we can put together a plan for you. All you have to do is head to taylorhutchinsonfitness.net and book a free consult. Again, make sure you like and subscribe if you like the video, and hopefully we'll see you soon.